turn in your Bibles with me to Psalm 100. Shout for the Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. It's time now to worship the Lord in faithfulness by returning to him our tithes and bringing before him an offering. And this morning's offering is for our local church budget. Paul writes, For I testify that they gave as much as they were able, and even beyond their ability, entirely on their own, they urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in this service to the Lord's people. 2 Corinthians 8, 3 and 4. That is how Paul describes the giving of the church members in Macedonia. He tells us that the members were in the extreme poverty that they gave beyond their ability. Furthermore, Paul, Paul tells us that they gave with an attitude of joy. The church in Macedonia was a sacrificial congregation. In our congregation, there are individuals who do not have much, yet they give beyond their ability, and they do it joyfully. So thank you for your faithfulness. It's because of such faithfulness that we have a church. Amen. Amen. You know, God is always faithful to us. Amen. So let us pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come and convict us, convict our hearts as to where we too can give sacrificially to maintain the level of activities that our church participates in. You know, the combined budget covers a lot of, a lot of territory from maintaining the physical plant, the church, to the outreach, the whole nine yards. So let's give generously, and let's get the work done. Amen. Will the deacons please rise to receive the offering. The congregation can stay seated as we sing hymn number two. Hymn number two. of our God and King, lift up your voice when
I'd like to invite you to stand as we uh, sing our doxology to that same tune. praise you and we thank you for the many blessings you've bestowed upon each one of us. And Lord, it is in love and with an attitude of gratitude that we bring before you the tithe and our offerings. Father, may you bless them and may you add your miracle of multiplication to each one of them and may your will be done. For we ask it in your name. Amen. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Is there any better way to do that than through prayer? You know, Eric, you were, you were saying, what are you thankful for this morning? And I'm thankful for prayer. I'm thankful for that hour of prayer every morning just on my own, uh, by myself on my, on, on my knees. Um, you know, it doesn't take long for the world to come right in your face. It's a beautiful thing to, to uh, start your day off with prayer. You know, I'm also thankful for uh, when we all get together in the house of prayer, where we can pray for each other and for our time. And uh, let's kneel as we head, go before the throne of grace. Father in heaven, thank you for calling us to be with you today. Thank you for convicting us of our need for you. Thank you for forgiving us our sins. And thank you for giving us your spirit that we may live the life you would have us to live. Thank you for the physical reminder that though our sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, the world is in turmoil. And there are plenty of ideas to solve them, but there is only one solution. And that is for people to have a heart change. For people to be, to be born again. And to put self away. And to think of others first. Father, this world needs Jesus. Please let this church be faithful to its call to share Christ to a lost and dying world in all that we do, say, and think. We cannot do this without you. Help us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church family. 
If you would take your hymnals, please, and open to the back to responsive reading number 723. Some of the greatest things that I'm thankful for are the most difficult times I've been through because I can look back now and see how God brought me through them, brought me closer to himself, Help me be more like him and glorified himself mightily. And we must not forget those times, should we? Because mm -hmm. we know more difficult times are coming. And if we stay faithful to God, he will do the same over and over and over again until we are just like him and he has glorified himself to the whole universe. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the, I'm going to ask you to read the uh, parts in the bold letters. And I'll read the rest. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way, till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to the sons of men. For he satisfies him who is thirsty, and the hungry he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in gloom, prisoners in affliction and in irons, for they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. And their hearts were bowed down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and gloom, and broke their bonds asunder. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wonderful works to the sons of men. And all God's people said, Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath. I'm so glad to hear our membership finally came through because we're just thrilled to be and grateful to be part of the Grand Rapids um, church family here at Central. And um, um, I was asked to give a testimony about thankfulness. And I sat and thought about that for a while and thought about that for a while. What would I say? Because there's just so many things I could share with you that we're thankful for today. They're just so numerous. Um, but as many of you know, our family is going through some, some more significant trials right now. As I'm sure I look around the audience, I know, uh, personally, I know there's other people going through trials right now. And they're difficult, but there's ways that we have found that we can be able to smile in the midst of anything that can happen to us today. And so um, a couple months ago, I decided I was going to start a thankful tree for my children. <laughs> and you can see my leaves here. <laughs> and I'm just going to read through you some of the things that we're thankful for today. And, and these are the children. So every day I'd ask them what they were thankful for. And we'd write down on their leaf and we'd hang it on the tree. So this is some of them. Um, this one, Alexander wrote, we're thankful we can go to heaven. And this is Alexander right here, and Elizabeth here, if you don't know, and Michael Levi. And no, they're not twins. They're actually 15 months apart, so <laughs> very close, but good. Um, let me find another one here. Uh, Michael was thankful for Sissy's bike, <laughs> so those are important. And Alexander was thankful for dreams. Um, he was having some good dreams that time. And this one here, Alexander was thankful for church. And this one, Michael was thankful for the bathtub and hot water. <laughs> and Elizabeth, this one, she said she was thankful for today. And then Alexander said he was thankful that Jesus died for him, that he might have eternal life. This one's from Elizabeth. She was thankful for daddy. And this one was from Michael. He was thankful he could ride his bike. And they ride around in our basement in circles. <laughs> And this one's from Michael. He was thankful for the tractor. 
and I'm thankful when they decided to get on it that nobody got hurt. <laughs> and Michael is thankful for water, and Elizabeth was thankful Jesus could come to her house, and that's one thing she looks forward to. And this one is um, Michael thankful God watches over me at night. And this one's for Michael, was thankful for firewood. <laughs> we like our warm fire. And Michael, this was a surprising one, was thankful for cleanup time. <laughs> and Michael was thankful for Bible books. And Alexander says, I'm thankful for Jesus. And this is from Alexander, is thankful for Woofy. That's his favorite stuffed animal dog that we have rescued numerous times from numerous places. <laughs> And this one here is from Alexander, and thankful that Jesus is coming soon to take us home to heaven, where there's going to be no more pain or tears again. This is Elizabeth, and again, she is thankful and hoping that Jesus could come visit her today at her house. That's very important to her. And this is Alexander, Jesus is alive, and Alexander, Jesus is coming soon. He's thankful for that. And no matter what you are going through right now today, you can be assured that God is always going to be with you. And sometimes that means he is going to carry you. He's going to take care of you. And whenever I need encouragement, I just look throughout the Bible. where There's numerous examples where I can be assured and know that even though Jonah stayed in the belly of the well, and that was probably pretty frightening for him, he knew that God was there with him, even though he necessarily didn't make the best decision. But you can just know and just start listing off your thankful leaves. And by the time you get to the end, there are so many things we are just blessed for today that we just have no idea how blessed we are. So that's what we're thankful for today. <laughs> Turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 95, and I'll be reading uh, Psalm 95, 1 through 6. 
Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving. Let us shout joyfully to him with psalms. For the Lord is the great God and the great King above all gods. In his hand are the deep places of the earth. The heights of the hills are, also, are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands form the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Amen. Happy Sabbath. I'm just going to read a Bible verse. Um, a bruised reed he will not break, and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out till he has brought justice through victory. Um, to me, this verse means that God will not give up on us, even if we're a broken, you know, broken twig, a dying flame, or, you know, even just a broken vessel, because let's face it, we all are, you know? But God has amazing grace and so much love for us that he will not give up on us, no matter what state we are in. And I just find so much comfort in that verse. was blood. 
mind But now I see Oh, I can see you now I can see the love in your eyes Laying yourself down And raising up the broken to That was beautiful, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hi, church. How you doing? Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. I was asked today to give testimony, and it was like about a month ago, and I had to think about it. And the, the, the three words that kept popping into my mind was, God is love. That's the end of my testimony. Thank you. No. Just kidding. It was about... Um, Three years ago, it was, the, it was in spring of 2012, and I, I met this young lady, and we, we started up a conversation, and she said the word Seventh-day Adventist. I've never heard of that before. And it sparked a conversation that led throughout the rest of the evening. We talked about Sabbath, we talked about Jesus coming, we talk about many things, and things that I've never heard of. And what I found amazing was that these were things that I always struggled to find the truth. And I can never find anyone to tell me the truth. And through this one person, with her witnessing to me, she told me the truth. And what was amazing, that same week, the, Lowell, the church in Lowell left a book on my doorstep. And the book that they left on my doorstep was The Great Controversy. I read it cover to cover, and it answered all my questions. I, I, I couldn't believe, like, how can this be? How can this, this simple book tell me what I needed to know? And the only thing I kept coming up with was God was looking for me, searching for me, trying to tell me where to go, trying to find the right direction. And that was done through witnessing. So what am I thankful for today? I'm thankful for someone who took the time to talk about Seventh-day Adventism and the Sabbath and what it means to her. To make a long story short, I end up courting this young lady and we end up getting married and I've been happy ever since. <laughs> it's kind of emotional for me because before any of this, I was kind of lost. I was a very selfish, prideful person who thought I had all the answers. And until the witnessing of, of this person, I had no idea. I was so wrong. I was so way off. It was just, I couldn't believe. I, I, I'm so glad that I've been saved. I've been so glad... And I was given a second chance. And I'm committed to spreading the word. I'm committed to witnessing. Because I'm noticing in my environment, especially at work, there's men who have problems. And they don't know how to deal with these problems. And they're coming to me. They're, they're going, William, you know, you always are in a good mood. You're always happy. How come? What, what's your secret? So I, I sat down a couple of guys and I decided, well, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start witnessing, teaching them what I've learned. And it grew from two to four to ten to the point where I, I couldn't do it at work anymore because the, the, the crowd was getting bigger. So then I went to local churches in, in my neighborhood to find if I can find a place to start a men's Bible study. And it grew from 20 to 50 to 100. To the point now, uh, I'm over like 500 men. We meet every Sabbath morning to go over the Bible. And what I try to teach them is basically everything that I've learned from this day forward as I continue to learn. Because I ask every day, 
Every morning I pray to God, please fill me with the Holy Spirit. Teach me what to say so I know what to say to these guys. Amen. And they keep coming back. And I, I, I hear stories from them they're telling me, William, you've changed my life. I don't know what it is. You change your life. I, I keep saying I know it is. It's God. God has entered your life. And it's made a difference. So what I ask of all of you, just because of one person, one person who witnessed changed my life. And I'm trying to change other lives. So what I'm asking from you is, don't be afraid. Don't, don't hesitate. Witness. Talk to people. Don't worry about what you're going to say because they're going, the words will come out. They always do. And what I'd like to do, if I may, can I end this in prayer? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that everyone here discovers your dream for their life so they become the blessing they were meant to be. I want to help them truly embrace the power of witnessing and to understand what it means. I want to install confidence and promote a vision. I want to stir everyone here to take action, to remain vigilant, and to share in the light. Father, please help them pass the torch of your light. Help us fight Satan not to let it go out. I like the end of scripture, 2 Timothy 3.16. All scripture is God's breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in the righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Amen. The devil hates it. The devil hates the word because it's brings forth life and diminishes darkness. Margarita, my wife, passed her torch to me. Who are you going to pass your torch to? Have a great day. Happy Sabbath. Well, I pray that as you have listened to these powerful testimonies, and you've heard some music, and heard the word of God in scripture, that you adopt an attitude of gratitude and that the spirit of thankfulness will always be in your heart. Not just during this time of year, but every day of your life. As we close with our hymn, I'd like to invite you to stand and join with me as we sing hymn number 557. Hymn number 557. <laughs>
Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To God our Savior, who alone is wise, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen.